Hey guys, what's up? JK with Pawn Reboot here. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today I'm going to be speaking about the topic of lying and why porn addicts have this tendency to lie, not just to our partners, but also to professionals who are trying to help us, coaches, therapists, and counselors. Now, when you first speak to someone about your problem with pornography or your problem with masturbation or some other out of control sexual behavior, the professional that you're speaking to or the person you're opening up to expects a certain level of honesty from you. Unfortunately, most professionals who are not too familiar with sexually compulsive disorders are often surprised to find out that for the porn addict, it's a huge risk for you to open up to them in that way. It's a huge risk to actually share what has been really going on in your life. The truth is, as a porn addict, throughout your struggle with pornography and masturbation, you've engaged in blaming others, you have justified things, you have experienced a lot of distorted thinking when it comes to your addiction. And all of this has been in an attempt to protect yourself from shame. Shame is painful and many of us will do whatever it takes to avoid experiencing that pain. A lot of times I will get on the phone with a client and we'll be speaking and I quickly figure out that he's not serious and I find out because he often only seeks treatment, he often only seeks help in order to appease someone. And I think many of us, especially those who are married, those who are in relationship, those who have kids, have this mindset that we are going to end our addiction for our loved ones. Like, hey, I want to end this for my wife. I want to end this for my kids. But the problem with that is that it often just puts us in a place where we just do it to make them happy. And that creates more shame because when you slip and you're not doing it for yourself, you now end up hiding it from someone else. Now you know as a porn addict, especially if you're a guy who, you know, you're established in life, you have your career, you run a business, you're doing well, you're married, you've got kids, <laughs> you know that you're really good at presenting yourself in a very, very favorable light. You're really good at this. So on the outside, everybody thinks you're this upstanding citizen. They think that, you know, you're a well put together guy with the perfect life. But in reality, well, that's not who you are. You've just had a lot of practice putting yourself and creating this image of yourself as a perfect person. Well, not perfect, but just a person who doesn't have the sort of secrets that you do. And one of the things I'm really good at when I speak to men one-on-one -on -one is pretty much calling them out on their bullshit, especially the bullshit that you have told yourself and you've made yourself to believe in order to succeed in your career, in order to be a social individual, in order to be a husband, in order to be a partner, in order to be a father. Now, if you've ever been to a 12-step group or if you've ever spoken to a counselor or therapist, I want you to honestly answer this question. Ask yourself this question and answer it. When you disclosed your situation to them, right, did you honestly tell them about your current behavior or did you open up about the things that you did in the past? Because that is one of the characteristics of porn addicts, especially porn addicts who are just beginning to seek help. The reason I'm saying this is because I want you to become very, very aware of it if you're seeking help. And that is that tendency to talk about, oh yeah, you know what, in the past, yeah, I, you know, I used to do it all the time. I, I would watch porn like every day, I would watch it at work, I would jerk off in the bathroom. Sometimes I would compulsively masturbate 11, 12 times a day just because of the stress of my work, you know? But the reality is now you may have escalated to some other behavior. Maybe you've started seeking out prostitutes. Maybe your sexual tastes have changed, but you don't talk about that. You just talk about the stuff from the past. Now, why is this important? 
This is important because this is how the lies begin. And the first thing that you're doing is you're minimizing the reality of your problem. You don't realize that you're doing it, but what you're doing is that you feel that if you can minimize it, then maybe your treatment or whatever you need to do to end your out of control behavior is gonna take a shorter amount of time. Or maybe, you know, you can just get out of it easier, but you don't realize that you're doing it. So it's, this is one of those very subtle things. And if you've never sought help for this, you may have no idea what I'm talking about. That's absolutely fine. But if you have, I'm quite certain that you might be familiar with what I'm saying. Now, at this stage in your recovery, when you're seeking help, there are a few beliefs that you have that hold you back and cause you to lie. And the first of these beliefs is believing that there's really nothing that can help you. You know, some of you watch my videos, some of you have been to 12-step groups, some of you have spoken to a therapist, but deep down inside, you don't believe that there's anything that can help you. And that doubt is one of the things that causes you to lie. The second belief that you will have at the stage when you are starting to seek help is that everyone is overreacting to your situation. And what I mean by that is, you might go, you know what, these things JK is saying, or my therapist is saying, or these guys, this is over the top. It's, my problem is not that bad. I'm pretty sure, you know, everyone does this. Everyone watches porn. It's, it's not a big deal, you know, but you guys are overreacting, like this is going to destroy my life. But you forget that there are moments in your life where you feel absolutely horrible because there's a part of you that you have no control over. When you hear somebody else trying to help you, that belief kicks in and you're like, dude, why are you overreacting? It's not that big a deal. This is not gonna take me two years to beat. I should be good in like two or three months. I just need to stay off this for a while. But how long have you been trying, right? Now, many men have another belief which is formed from your experiences in life, you know? you've overcome a lot of adversity. Maybe you had some other disease or some other addiction that you successfully overcame. Maybe you are in a very challenging career. You know, you might be a physician or a lawyer or whatever, but you went through a lot to get to where you are in your career. And you're like, dude, I overcame all my adversities in the past by trying harder, by working harder. And so your belief, your core belief is that I can beat this addiction by simply trying harder, you know? I just need to do more things. I need to have a filter on my device. I need to have a really good friend who's an accountability partner who cares for me. I need to have a therapist. I need to watch more videos and get more courses. I need to have more boundaries. So you think that just trying harder and harder is going to get you there. And I always say this, it might. There are men who it does help. However, I guarantee that you are underestimating how much it takes to get there. And the first sign that you're underestimating it is that you think it takes more work and trying harder. This is not a question of effort. This is a question of behavior, understanding the behavior that needs to be changed. And if you do not have any sort of system to reboot, if you do not understand that your brain has to rewire and it's not a trying harder and working harder issue, it is unlikely that you're going to experience any noticeable progress. So please be aware of that belief. Another belief that causes you to lie when you're seeking help is believing that you can taper off. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a big one, especially for guys who've been struggling for a long time. You know, you believe that, you know, if I just cut down, you know, if I start cutting down on, you know, just going from masturbating, you know, every other day to masturbating once a week, or maybe I can do this, you know, just twice, twice a month, or, you know, I'll just, I'll just watch porn in moderation, not too many times, you know. I won't open too many tabs. I'll just watch one and masturbate to it, and that should help rewire my brain because I'm not overdoing it, you know. I'm just cutting back to what a normal guy would do. It's too late for that, buddy. It's a little too late for that. 
Your brain has already rewired. You already have a compulsive disorder. You cannot cut down. The only way to reboot is to completely remove yourself from any sort of stimuli that releases the same neurochemicals and the same hormones in certain amounts which cause you to view pornography and to masturbate. Your brain has to rewire. That's the only way this happens. Another reason why porn addicts lie when they're seeking help is because they have a belief that it isn't their fault. And what I mean by this is maybe you've been through a separation, right? You say that, you know what, I've been using pornography to deal with the pain of my separation, you know, and it's escalated. It's not really my fault. It's the separation's fault. It's my partner's fault. You know, not my fault. And already you're putting the blame on another situation or on another person or your wife is no longer having sex with you by choice or not by choice maybe she has some health issue whatever the case may be and you're like i'm no longer intimate with my wife it's her fault you know or your wife had some sort of emotional affair some issue or the other with your partner and you're like it's her issue you know she doesn't want to do this with me so I view porn, I masturbate, or my girlfriend is holding out for some reason, she doesn't want to have sex anymore. Well, it's her fault and that's why I have this problem. You are always going to find yourself lying when you reach out for help, when you have not taken full responsibility for your addiction. Whenever I get on the phone with a man and find out that he still hasn't taken responsibility for his addiction, I don't allow him to join any of my program. It doesn't matter whether he has the money or not because it requires commitment and it requires maturity. And one of the signs of maturity is accepting full responsibility for where you are today. It's no longer going back and blaming something that happened in your childhood. It's no longer blaming the way you were raised or the abandonment or the neglect or the abuse that you suffered. Those things have already happened. They were unfortunate, but here you are. You can't change those things that happened in the past, but you can accept responsibility for who you are today and what you're gonna do about it. So brothers, I'm sharing this video because I simply don't want to see you put roadblocks in front of yourself when you're seeking help from a professional. A professional doesn't have to be me, it can be anybody else, all right? So I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. And brothers, whenever you are ready, there are a few ways that I can help you end your out of control behavior with porn, sex, or masturbation. The first way is to pick up a copy of my free book. It's called Confessions of a Porn Addict, Seven Secrets of Porn Free Men. There's a link to it in the description below. The second way is to join our free Facebook group. This is a place where I interact with men. You can get yourself an accountability partner. There is so much support in the Facebook group. That is our community. That is our hub. So I highly recommend you join it. And there's a link to it in the description below. And finally, if you are at a point in your life where you don't feel like you're making progress fast enough. You're like, listen, I'm a busy man. I have a lot of stuff going on in my life. And right now, the steps that I'm taking to end this behavior are working and you want to experience faster results. And you might want to consider getting on a call with me or with one of my strategists to find out if you're a good fit for our program. Or if you've been struggling on your own and you've been making progress, but you've come to a point where you realize that you really can't do it alone. That you might need that extra support just to get to the point where you need to. So sometimes you've made a lot of progress. You've gone from, you know, viewing pornography every day or every other day to only viewing porn maybe once a month or once every two months. But each time you do so, it's really a binge and it feels like a relapse. And you're like, I just want to get to a point where I just don't watch pornography at all. I don't have those urges anymore. Well, you might also want to consider getting on a call with me to find out if you're a good fit. There are a few caveats. If you do want to get on a call with me, firstly, you must be over the age of 25. Secondly, you must be committed to your recovery. If you get on the phone with me and you're like, hey man, I just wanted to get some tips and tricks, no offense, but that is not what I get on the phone with men for. Every tip or trick you might need is in my podcast or it's here on this YouTube channel. Only get on the phone with me if you are ready 
to end your addiction permanently. All right, now if you've enjoyed the video, if you found it helpful, please support the channel by subscribing. Don't forget to click on the bell icon to get notified every time I release a video. Leave a comment and share it with a man or a group of men whom you feel might benefit from this video. I'm JK, your brother in this struggle. Thank you so much for watching the video. I'll speak to you later in the week.